Amazing people come in all shapes and sizes, in different forms. And to have one with you, next to you, sitting close to you, is something that you cannot imagine. Now we have had many amazing people in our studios, but this one is unique. Because amazing people, sometimes they are achievers, sometimes they are contributors to society. But when you have a combination of both, that is truly amazing. And with me in the studios of News Karnataka today, we have Ankit S. Kumar, a really amazing person. And that's why he's with us in our studio, in our series called Amazing People. Now, why is he amazing? Because not only has he achieved a lot, including writing a book, it's 100 ways how not to screw up your relationship, but we'll come to that in a moment. Also, he has contributed in so many ways to healthy relationships between people. And that, I think, is the biggest contribution that he has made to society. Because today, our relationships are fractured for a variety of reasons, possibly even the pandemic. But we'll come to that as we explore his book in a little while. Before I proceed, let me just tell you a little bit about Ankit Kumar. Currently, he's a counselor at Nitte University, close to Mangalore. And he has come specifically to our studios to talk about his book. But he is also an author, a psychosocial scientist, and a speaker at the TEDx. So a very accomplished person, a BBM from SDM College, and then an MSW in psychiatric social work from the prestigious Roshni Nilaya. In fact, I feel connected to him because I too am from that institution. So. Um, it's something that I also can learn a lot from. Uh, with me, I would like to welcome Ankit to this studio of newskarnataka.com and I would like to ask him the first question is what motivates you to achieve so much and contribute so much? We'll come to the book in a little while. So thank you, thank you for welcoming sir. So as a human, I believe that if we have to have a purpose in life and if our life has to be meaningful, we need to be contributing. We cannot be selfish just thinking about ourselves. We get a lot of things from the society like whatever we are is because of society. So whenever we are getting something from society, it is our duty, a moral responsibility to give something back. So society has given a lot to me and I feel obliged that yeah, I should also do something so that I can contribute back using my skills because it's a God gift. When God gives you a skill, you cannot just waste it and you can't use it only on you. So you should share it. And when we keep on sharing, whatever we share, it comes in return tenfold. So it's a kind of a cycle. You give, you get back and also it's a kind of a gratification we get. It could be a small thing or a big thing. At the end of the day, when you go to bed and you have a smile saying that, yeah, you did something, that's the purpose of life. That's something that we look for. Great. Um, giving back to society, the most important thing in life because you give back to cycle. Uh, you, as he said, it's a cycle. You give to society, it comes back to you in one way or another. Now, relationships. We all have this issue. I mean, those of you who are married or those who have your Facebook status or your WhatsApp status in a relationship. I'm sure you've seen that. If you've seen such uh, statements, now, whether that relationship is actually good or bad or is on the rocks, that only you know because it doesn't say on the Facebook or the WhatsApp. But if you notice, there is a light. If you, I'll just give you an example. If there's a light bulb or a light or a lamp that's connected to a uh, connected to a socket in your house, when you put on the switch, the lamp lights up, the room lights up. Now, relationship is all about connections. Sometimes when these connections are there and the electricity goes off, the lamp goes off and the room becomes dark. Now many of our relationships are in that state. We have connections, we are connected, but at the same time we are disconnected. And that can have an impact both on your life, your stress and on society in general. And uh, Ankit has written a very interesting book. And I believe uh, it sold in 15 countries and was an Amazon bestseller. Uh, not yeah. uh, this, uh, 
selling new releases in the new releases yes it was so everybody is interested to know a hundred ways on how not to screw up your relationships I am also interested so let's start with the first one what is the first one I should know as to how not to screw up my relationship it's first of all first of all tell me what is a relationship a uh, relationship according to me it's not a scientific classification what i have understood because i have worked with people students general public couples mad couples couple who are in love 10 years of experience has taught me one thing is relationship is one form of communication okay there are different types of communication but relationship is also kind of, kind of as you said a connection which is built on communication because you can say a lot of things but most importantly people are not focusing on how to say it it's not about not always about what you say it's about how you say it and it's all about the intentions you have in relationship why you are in it for what what for are you in it and most of all it's all about how you respect one is communication next is the respect people think that love enough love is enough love alone can sustain anything well that's good when you are in the honeymoon we call we have something called as honeymoon phase of relationship that is the beginning of the relationship where you, you propose a girl or you are in a relationship or you are just married or maybe eight to eight months to one year we call it as a honeymoon phase there love plays a very important role but once the responsibility kicks in there we look for communication consistency respect and you know the roles for to play the division of roles since you are from human resources even we say relationship it's a kind of a hierarchy thing and how things the roles are divided because most of the conflict happens in roles and uh, what kind of respect and usually what happens is the husband and wife when you say husband a certain role is inclined to them you know he only husband has to do it when you say wife there is a certain role prescribed to them only so these kind of conflicts arises and one of the important thing in relationship is how you manage conflicts correct absolutely and also in india when you say relationship we think that relationship are between one a boy and a girl but in india when you marry a person you marry the entire family you don't marry just a person so if you are uh, trying to if you are willing to share a life with someone it's not just one person you are allowing into your life you are allowing the entire family and her or his friends so it's a kind of complicated communication you can say okay uh, you have written this book, A Hundred Ways How Not to Screw Up Your Relationship. And what really prompted you to write this book? Okay, this, that's actually what happened. This is my 10th uh, year of as a counsellor. Mm -hmm. On an average, in a month, I get more than 7 to 8 cases of teenagers as well as adults and also a you know, married couple. Uh, basically, the problem, it could be psychological problem, even physical problems. Mm -hmm. When I go and probe into their problems, I see that it, is, it has something to do with the relationships. And when I noticed those problems, I saw that most, and almost 80% of the time, people, people are doing the same mistake over and over again. They're doing the same mistakes. Do they realize it? They, that's the reason. They don't realize it. Mm -hmm. they, sometimes they realize it, but they ignore it, thinking that it's a part of life. They don't address it. The most of the issues that happen in our life, or it could be a simple conflict, like uh, today morning, uh, you're supposed to wake me up at 5 o'clock, mm -hmm. but you forgot to wake up. So, just a small conflict between husband and wife, if they are able to address it, that will be solved. But the problem is they don't know how to address it and there the ego plays, ego comes, why should I address it, let them address. So, what I noticed here is most of the uh, problems related to relationship are repeated problems and common problems which everyone is doing it. So, I thought why not I compel it, you know, why not why I collect it and so what happens is when we are, if I am doing a mistake, I may not realize it as much as when I hear it from a third person, a neutral person. Okay, so it's a third person perspective, like a neutral, because when you are in a neutral position, you don't have any prejudice or bias, you directly say what it is. Now if someone comes to you, a friend comes and asks you, what did I do wrong? You may have this emotional connection with the friend and you may not be so openly discussing about what was the issue. You may not be able to directly point out that, yeah, you did wrong. But as a third person, from the outsider point of view, you, you are able to openly tell, straight to the face, that this is what you did. So I wanted to give the third person perspective so that when you hear it from a, another person that this is what you did, you kind of get a kind of a, you know, introspection or a kind of uh, realization, yeah, yeah, yeah this, this is something, you know, I should have thought of it. Uh, whatever I have written, actually people know about it. They know it that this is a problem, but they are not able to accept it because their ego stops it. But when a third person, comes and tells you at least for a while you are you are getting a realization ah yeah i did this 
So that's why I thought, okay, let me bring it up to a book and so that people will know what they're doing wrong and uh, try it. Let it it's a kind of counseling if you read that. It's a kind of a therapy. When you go on reading chapter by chapter, you feel that some therapist is talking to you. Absolutely. But uh, I have one uh, doubt because it will come to me also. Mm. Let's say I read this book. Mm -hmm. Will I apply it to myself or will I apply it to, a, to my uh, significant other? Like for instance, oh I did this wrong mm -hmm. after reading your book. Maybe I should correct this. Mm -hmm. Or did she or he do it wrong? What perspective will I get when I read this book? That is my question. Here because as you said, ego plays a big role. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For every situation, there are three sides of stories, sir. Yeah. The real, your side, my side, side and the real side. The real side. <laughs> <laughs> say that. So what happens here is this book gives perspectives from both sides. Like you, if your significant other has done a mistake, this book will help you to you know, know how to communicate it to it. Like I said in the beginning, it's not what you say, it is how you, how say. you say it. You can say the worst thing in the most best way. You can say the most best thing in the worst way. Mm. So it's all about the tone you use. Mm. Sometimes if you're like, you want to say something, like you want to say that you did wrong, but you use sarcasm, it's not going to solve the problem. Instead of using sarcasm, if you use a normal understanding tone, things can work out. So if you use sarcasm, it's like you're adding more fuel to the fire. And when you read it, if you want, if you're doing a mistake, you come to realize that, yeah, okay, I may not ask sorry to her, but maybe to next time I will not repeat it. If your ego is stopping from saying sorry, but next time you'll know. Because what happens is, if you are not willing to listen to significant other, you will not know where you went wrong. And when you don't know where you went wrong, you will keep on continuing the mistake. So this will give an idea, okay, this is where you are going wrong, so don't repeat it. You ask, oh sorry, you apologize, it's up to you. But it will give an idea that, okay, this is where, what went wrong. Okay. Uh, why a hundred ways? Can it, could it not be 110? Could it not be 95? Uh, sometimes you know the cricketers get out at 99. <laughs> so you, you, you scored a century. Century because what uh, one is that it was matching the title. It was catchy there. Okay. Uh, 50 ways, 100 ways, uh. 100 ways, and uh, it was looking nice. It was for the catchy <laughs> phrase. So, so there's nothing uh, specific beyond. Uh, no. So I, I think if I know 100 ways, then I think I don't require the 101st way. But one thing, I'll, uh, what we have noticed as in the psychiatry field is, as years pass by, new problems come. That's true. We are inventing new problems. Post-COVID, there are certain problems that have arise which was non-existent before right. COVID. So we have to keep on improvising. We have to keep on, uh, you know, uh, finding out new things because now coming to adolescents as well as married couple or teenagers, now the relationship style. If you see how we, we were when we started our relationship, uh, how the communication was with the other opposite sex and how the communication is now with the opposite sex is totally different. Now it is more scary actually how a uh, 16 year old girl and a boy, how they communicate because I have seen, I deal with students of ranging from 14 to 23 age. So their communication, even the slight communication morning wishes, the way they are talking to each other is completely changed and they are restless. Earlier relationship requires a lot of patience, but unfortunately in a very alarming way, patience, that one thing which is very important in relationship is going to a toss like because now students don't have patience at all and that is causing a lot of breakups. The girl doesn't have uh, patience or, uh, to uh, deal with the boy, the boy doesn't have patience with the girl and the uh, type of interactions they have because we see the interactions they do on a daily basis. It is like way beyond their maturity. So uh, there, and uh, uh, I, I'm not blaming, but it has to do a lot of with the it's OTTs. Absolutely, the I was about to come to that actually. Yes, <laughs> OTTs because earlier we had Durdashan and things. The romance in TV was two sunflowers coming, and you know that was our time. But now. There is no, I uh, don't know. Now no it's cross, cr cross pollination. <laughs> yes, cross pollination. <laughs> and people, when the children see it at their uh, very young age, they feel like it is normal. Mm. This is what we are supposed <coughs> to do. Because media has a very, you know, you know impact, Huge. high impact. You can change, create change within days rather than go and talk to them. So, what they are doing is, okay, whenever they see something in the media, even the uh, children as small as five year old, now, uh, if you, 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 are, you know that how that uh, the rape cases and everything are from 11 age, the age group of 11 to 12, children are indulging into these activities. So these are all societal influences, the media influences, because what happens is uh, whatever we see in the OTTs, there is no control, there is no supervision. Even though they say 18 plus, the tag, 
is just for the formality there so whatever they see in the series the web series they feel that yeah they have to use it in the because you can find it in their languages the accent the languages the words they're using and this is going to create a lot of problem in the coming future because there is no consistency people the children of the age 16 to 17 they are so restless that within one month they lose interest in people like how we were when we were young and you know we used to wait for our partner to just say hello or to call them we used to call them once a month now every second you have to be in touch you have to be online it's a kind of addiction we call it as behavior addiction people are getting addicted rather than being in relation and when in addiction one of the bad things about addiction is if you don't get them it goes to it has a lot of side effects like withdrawals you get frustrated uh, there are a lot of cases which i am not uh, allowed to discuss openly uh, just because of some small misunderstanding and uh, and nowadays uh, there is nothing called as privacy in relationship everything is open you post everything about your personal life on instagram or whatsapp status and all your friends know about what is going on between you and they are saying too many cooks spoil the broth when when you involve too many people in your relationship obviously it's going to get a create a mess so that is one chapter there don't don't involve no don't keep your uh, relationship private as much as possible because if you involve too many people it will end up in a mess yeah but the thing is uh, i i i listen to you mm-hmm. uh, about the ott about the media influence mm-hmm. about um, you know people uh, children being influenced by the media and what they see and they how they aspire to be mm-hmm. what they see on the media the thing is in our information age mm-hmm. and as things start evolving already 5g is mm-hmm. uh, already come and ott is evolving very fast there is very little um, leeway to control things mm-hmm. right yes so when there is very little leeway to control the external environment how do you control your internal environment so that you're not that influenced mm-hmm. by what one of them is of course to read this book mm. <laughs> uh the other one is what are the other methods uh that you can control your internal environment so that you're not that influenced by what happens outside uh because ultimately i think that is the key yes uh, that is what uh, everything should happen from our own willingness we should not be forced to do something yeah. for that uh, as i have written in the book uh, i have taken a piece of sarvajna's vachana mm-hmm. that uh, which says that there are some things which we are we are supposed to learn from people who know there are certain things which mm-hmm. you have to learn from people who do things and there are certain things which you have to learn by doing ourselves so whenever we do mistakes we are not supposed to repeat the mistake but rather learn from it the problem here is we are a habit we have a habit of doing the same mistakes again and again and again and again irrespective of like you have you are in relationship you have a breakup and you decide that no more that will be there for a uh, hardly 2 3 months then again you go back to the same thing so until and unless you learn mm-hmm. from the mistakes and obviously we can't do all the mistakes so we have to also learn from other people's mistake and about self control that also depends on how you are bringing for the first 5 years to success how you are because i'll tell you now because of this uh, uh, nuclear family issues parents are working one or two children parents come home at 6 o'clock children are home at 3:30 and the only thing they have a communication is the screens and uh, easy access to whatever they want to see so what happens is children see by imitation they don't uh, learn by you know imitation also uh, sorry they don't uh, learn by hearing things the most easiest way or the most important or impactful way how children learn is by imitation they see things so if you say to a child don't use mobile phone you can't just make it stop by saying it at home if the parents are also sitting with a mobile phone and the children the child is also seeing it is obviously going to affect it same way when you talk about relationship because now in our society in the indian context which parent whoever it is for mother or father will openly talk about relationship that is a question in western countries uh, at when a child when a girl or a boy reaches a certain age the mother and father comes and they have this talk the talk very important talk which actually i am advocating in our society the parents have to do the talk but parents themselves are shy or like hey that you'll understand that you know they say adel in beda no that you'll understand when you are growing you'll understand that is a mistake what we are doing either the children parents are shy or they don't know how to talk so obviously children will have their friends who will give a lot of information but what kind of information whether it is a right information wrong information no one is going to cross check we also don't have a habit of cross checking whether the information is right or wrong so 
when the parents are not there in the picture because when a girl reaches 10 years when a boy reaches 11 years the talk it could be we talk about reproductive system and everything that's one thing but relationship yeah, relationship yes no one talks about it they're like uh, that is not nothing that you, it's not your age actually that is age we think that 18 after 18 you'll know but that 18 age is a legal thing that you know you're eligible for an uh, voter id you're eligible to have alcohol you're eligible to uh, drive those are legally defined age but when it comes to biological thing 18 is not the age of maturity people immature from the state of 10 years for example girls mature uh, faster than the boys it's not just physical maturity we are parents yeah, are focusing emotional. yeah parents are focusing only on the physical, physical maturity they don't talk about relationship at all i i don't know I don't I've not heard or seen parents actually sitting with the children and talking about relationship if a girl and girl comes and say I have a boyfriend you know how people react how parents will react I, I don't know whether she knows the definition of what a boyfriend, <laughs> boyfriend should mean should be, yeah. I don't know whether it is uh, just something that she sees on the TV yeah. and therefore she needs to have one yes so or he needs to have a mm. girlfriend or whatever it is that is there in the college their friend circle if you are if you are the only person without a girlfriend they you know consider you something yeah. else it's like a, you have to blend in it's you need peer, to have that kind of beer peer pressure and you want, to, you want to be a part of it because they are saying that okay you are not capable of having it the thing is here the what we say is first to 15 years is where the personality develops for everyone yeah so in that first to 15 years of the age if parents can expose them to the right things not only the right thing they should show what is wrong we tell them not to do it but we don't give them an explanation why you're not supposed to do it because children are obviously curious obviously you yes. tell them don't touch it but if they ask why no answer so you data don't go with your friends why no you don't don't ask me don't cross question me you are not so you are just not supposed to go that's it no more questions that is a problem here because that's how rebellions the rebellious nature comes you're not giving the proper answer and children are very curious they need proper answer you give half answer they'll not be happy and now even mobile accesses and internet they just are you 18 plus they click on 18 plus and they can see anything so supervision to, even before the idea here is the parents should be in a position to talk about this even before the children get the information from outsiders but here what's happening is by the time parents come and talk about it, it's too late they already have this information okay they are also experiencing experiencing certain things which are way beyond description at their very young age yeah as small as puc also but there is also a theory, I'm, I'm not sure that the theory is right, mm. that uh, the current children are different from the childhood that we had mm. and they are far more intelligent and far more perceptive than we were mm. at our, uh, when we were children. So maybe it is the right thing, this is what many people think, but I, I personally, as you said, I don't agree. The certain things are, are meant like milestones, yes. like children's milestones, they are for a particular age. This is, uh, I understand you were talking about um, adolescents mm. and their relationships mm. with each other and the peer pressure in maybe college environments or whatever. What about married couples, married couples. or live-in couples? Nowadays, live-in is mm. the style. Yes. So, uh, what about them? I mean, what is what is what is challenging in those relationships? Yes. There was a time, like uh, maybe 30 years ago, where the roles were fixed and properly understood. For example, women were not allowed to uh, be educated. They were from childhood where they were told only one thing: you are supposed to learn household work. You are supposed to take care of the household. That was told in those days. This is your role. But now, due to advancement, that's a good advancement, girls and boys are all educated. They're in the same level. So what happens is, a, a, a lady or a girl who was, let's say, 1920s or something, her, she was programmed to think that her life is just to take care of the household and listen to the husband. Mm -hmm. So she was brought up in that way. But here, as of now, the ladies are ambitious. That's a good thing. So now what happens is the girls have changed their perspective, but the men have not. Have not because they still think that you're a wife. You're supposed to do that. We wanted women empowerment and that's a good thing. Women are empowering, they're everywhere. But somewhere in our psychology, we are still not able to accept that okay, women should as a wife should be equal to men. But what is happening in the woman's psychology is that she has been, ex uh, she is ambitious, she has experienced and she has gone out to work, she has seen the world, she knows how things work, she knows everything. So 
being having so much of power and potential if you try to suppress her how will she react earlier a wife is beaten threatened uh, do anything she'll keep quiet she'll not even complain it with the parents parents but now <coughs> they have they know their rights so what happens here is we want advancement in everything but when it comes to relationship we are still lagging with the understanding that okay even a girl should be allowed to think like us so what's happening here is now women are independent we may be social independent may be economic independence same as men but men are not able to accept that you know you, uh, you know if i'm not there you can survive no i need you uh, you need to have me you need to have the husband to survive but women are not accepting that they like yeah i need a husband but that doesn't mean that i should not have my own individuality it's a matter of individuality earlier wife didn't have individuality her her identity was connected to the husband only now the concept is that husband and wife have their own identity own individuality and they need to see it, now the uh, marriage should be like a partnership now how does a partnership work it's not like you know you do this i do this like we are going to do it together together yes you have some strengths i yeah. have some strengths it's like a, yeah uh, we plan out how the work should be but still now it's like again i said the ego factor and about communication now uh, even uh, jealousy jealousy is more now consider earlier uh, there was no jealousy as such but jealousy is more it could be personal jealousy or uh, professional jealousy is also now your uh, partner is getting more recognition and attention even that cause there were a lot of cases there was a case of a uh, high profile people where wife was getting more attention and uh, she was murdered actually it happened in rajasthan she was ips officer and uh, husband was a businessman earlier they were being proud but this what happened she was going coming home late and she was always not in the house it's a real story that happened in rajasthan she was murdered by the family just because the mother in law was not you know okay with her being like that so those the kind of thing you know the jealousy you are supposed to be always subordinate and again what happens is seeing a girl being open throughout the history a independent woman was seen as a threat in the society so we had lot of restrictions even now even though we don't openly show it inside the house it happens i had recently dealt with a couple uh, she is working for a central bank he is a uh is just a faculty in a training institute even though they are advanced both engineers both uh, uh high class people but when they are not married they are uh, yet to be married they are in relationship from past 5 years she is not allowed to do certain things which he doesn't approve maybe like you know she is not she is not supposed to go and dance in front of anyone is a matter of prestige they say i said why is that is that like you know something that is a family gathering if she she, she is not supposed to dance she is independent she has a central government job she is educated they are not even married yet to marry and the boy is having problem that she is dancing in front of her friends not public friends now why this thought he is also educated he is also an engineer a uh, master degree engineer he is also a teacher he is also a motivator he gives lot of talks and all but when it comes to his own partner why this so what we are doing is we are hiding these kind of restrictions earlier it was done openly now we are doing it totally mm. so this is what happened there is kind of a jealousy brewing there is a chapter law of dmu law of diminishing marginality yeah. yes, yeah, 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 yeah. when you you eventually people get fed up yes absolutely so, so same thing happened so if there the moment there is now another issue what we have seen in um, the relationship is the lack of stimulations as i said uh, the honeymoon phase of relationship married or uh, you are in the uh, beginning of relationship first four months it's you everything is nice everything is beautiful everything is in slow motion everything has a playback music there but eventually when you are let us say you have to be with someone for a long time then the real thing starts so eventually as the age goes or the time passes you try to you know try to be there because there will be a guilt like if i leave now what will happen so here the stimulations earlier you were so excited about the new person you were always getting the stimulation but eventually it drops it also has to do with the oxytocin also the hormone once it is released it doesn't stay active throughout yeah it, it yeah. if you the very good example is covid time people when they were husband and wife was away like husband was going to work and a wife was also going to work and evening they were coming and meeting love was very good they had proper understanding but the moment they started living together 24 hours you know what happened divorce fights everything because that's what happened eventually you get fed up if, the, if you don't stimulate 
all the romances, all the going out, the dates, initially in the first year. Then responsibility, you do this and you hardly talk. There's no because the brain works with the reward system. When you do something and you achieve something, you need to reward the brain. For example, when I do some work, if I win, I go and have an ice cream. The ice cream is a reward. So the brain will think that if I do a work, I'll get another ice cream. Same way, if you have to do something for your spouse or your significant other, there should be a return. We say that there is unconditional law, but in reality, everything is conditions applied. You do something for someone unconditionally, for a while you will be happy. But if they like, if they treat you like you don't exist, if they take you for granted, how do you feel? We say it's unconditional love, but inside we feel that I do so much things, but still that person is not giving any gratitude. So that reward system should be stimulated every now and then, otherwise... So love is a transaction. So when I... <laughs> it has, something has to be there, yeah. otherwise you say, okay, even parents will say, okay, parents love. There also will be, be some expectation. People will say, parents will say, I don't have expectation, but we know there will be something. Okay, you need to do this, you need to do that. There are a lot of uh, engineering students in our college who are doing engineering because of the parents' expectation, not okay, they were not allowed to do what they wanted. So it, yeah. it is also kind of expectation. And at the end of the at the end of the uh, education, they say we have spent we have mm. sacrificed so much for you, mm -hmm. and this is what you are doing. Yeah. And that is their expectation, expectation in return. So that also puts pressure. So and all these pressures um, work on our uh, mm -hmm. psyche. Mm -hmm. um, we have covered relationships, and uh, I think um, all of you will now try to understand where you stand in your relationship. And if you find that your relationship is on the rocks or getting close to that, and the water is already, you know, tapping at your feet, it's time to read this book. Okay, it's uh, hundred ways how not to screw up your relationship. And uh, you can start with the first one, and by the time you reach hundred. I'm sure your relationship will be at the peak. But be that as it may, I would like to ask Ankit, he wrote this book. This is your first book, right? Yeah, it's my first book. Yeah. So, what were the challenges uh, that you, as an author, mm -hmm. now you, you are doing counseling, you're making notes about the cases that you receive and how you have uh, dealt with them and the various nuances. But writing a book about all that, what were the challenges? One thing is that whether it will be accepted, that thought. I write so much, I put thousands of hours of efforts. What if people don't accept it? But that we can come to know only after the book is released. That's true. One is <coughs> then the publishing cost. Because now traditional publishers, they take years together. You yeah. send a manuscript, hardly they respond sometimes or after many years you wait, then they say it's rejected. So fortunately for me, there is something called self-publishing nowadays. Yeah. Very nice and yeah, very yeah. useful for new authors. So that is also what I want the uh, public to know that writing now has become easy. And one thing is that you just have to start. I, what I did was whenever, it's not like I sat one hour every day to write a book. It's like I was driving something and suddenly a thought comes. I just record it in my mobile phone and then take it down. Because writing a book, you can't just have a timetable, okay, I'm going to write a book. Because while you're eating food or while you're taking bus, suddenly a thought comes. And suddenly, uh, if you think that I will take it down after one hour, you'll forget it. So the idea is you have to immediately take down whatever. It's like a raw feed. Let the words flow and write it. The grammar check, formatting, everything you can do, do later. later yes. You just write whatever comes to your mind. Mm -hmm. And automatically you can see that it uh, creates again, it gets into shape. And one more thing is that the one is uh, about the uh, sun. Uh, now we are in a society where everything is controversial. <laughs> the controversies, the topics. So you have to think a hundred times before writing something. Will it be offensive? Okay, because, and, but there's a, I forgot who it is, there's a famous writer who says that if whatever you write didn't piss anyone off, that means whatever you wrote was not worth it. So it has to, there are certain pages that I have given a disclaimer that, that it, it will feel like uh, someone has punched you in the gut. So those kind of realities. So there are certain things that could be offensive also, because there's, I, uh, as much as possible I kept it real there. Some, when you read it, you feel that okay, this is too much. But that is the truth. Because you can't fabricate truth. We like to live in a fantasy world. So bringing out the reality, that's the biggest uh, problem or the toughest thing. You know, as in a journalist or media, writing the truth is the most toughest job. Yeah. You can uh, fabricate it, you can write it, uh, you know, fantasies and I think it's very really easy. You have a control. But when you write this, you have to make sure that whatever writing is real. You can't write fantasy and make people believe, yeah, this is going to work. So research. 
another research because this uh, many of the ideas from psychologists and relationship counselors experts I have taken I have borrowed it from there and also uh, some theories there which are borrowed and which are time tested so we need to see that whether it fits whether it matches because tomorrow no one should feel that okay well, this is and also about cultural thing now many of the psychology books what we read are written by westerners, westerners yes. and the study is conducted in western culture if you see there is only limited number of books that are related to Indian context if you see Sigmund Freud's work it is completely based on western culture if you use certain ther theories of Sigmund Freud here it may not work because our culture is totally different so I had to write in such a way that it matches our Indian context of marriage because if you go to relationship self-help books in a western country now whatever is available in the market they speak about relationship based on western traditions or western culture like dating multiple relationship live in as you said but even in, in even now in India we have traditional context of marriage okay there um, two people get married the parents don't know that they got married they call and they'll say that we are married but in India it doesn't work like that so I had to write in such a way that it works for Indian context also because you go through any self-help and motivational books 90% are Western culture based so we can't use certain things in India so I had to see that it is suiting for the Indian context also so that people will understand otherwise now if you say if I, I tell the students dating people people did dating when I, when I use the word dating they start laughing I said why because for them dating means sex that is what they understand but it is not so dating could be anything but the word date because they have seen it in OTTs the date ends up in sex they feel that dating is sex but it's not so you can just go for a coffee with someone you can go with your own parents also we can, I, I sometimes movie date with my mom so the word date it has a wrong connotation yes so the, that kind of issues are there in that uh, when you're writing a book in Indian context because I have to see whether the Indians or what are we people or our, our society will actually understand it in the same frame of mind which I wrote because related to there are certain sensitive issues also I have written so when I write the sensitive issues for example uh, you see uh, when a, a lady goes to Gainak for a test usually the doctors have an issue about asking about their sexual uh, activities because openly they can't ask because people get offended but if you go to western countries they have a form where there is a question how many sexual partners do you have openly they ask if you ask the same question in India the doctor will be in the news tomorrow harassment so those kind of differences are there still there even though you're advanced you know people are not comfortable talking only when you are open and comfortable talking about the sensitive issues in relationship will there be a proper understanding we hardly talk about it we hardly talk about these things no doubt we talk about our relationship with the third party now I have a problem with my girlfriend I should talk with my girlfriend not with anyone else but what are we doing here rather than actually talking to a person the source of the problem or the actual person we are supposed to talk we are talking with 10 people but we hardly talk with the person who is responsible for it so communication has to happen uh, just one question mm. from what mm. you were saying uh, uh, we, we are mm. we are on the subject of the mm. challenges of the book mm. but uh, in between i want mm. to just ask one question let's say i'm uh, uh, i have to resolve an issue with my significant other mm. is it easier for me to just text rather than talk face to face i know it's a uh, part of this thing but uh, let me just ask yeah. you that question i written there never fight on <coughs> online never fight online mm -hmm. there's a very good example what happens if you do that Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, Amber Heard yeah. if you want your personal life to become public text because now you know it can be screenshots can be taken it can be manipulated so I always recommend or suggest to people never fight online do it face to face no matter how far you are you just meet and talk because you don't know how the person is when he's far or you know maybe you're driving and suddenly your significant has a has a fight and you're driving and you're upset and things can go wrong so it's always better not to have sensitive communication or fights online that is what I suggest because I've seen a lot of problem that screenshot getting circulated everywhere and that uh, adds to the problem that doesn't resolve problem and uh, the audio notes getting uh, misused I've seen in a Western country where uh, a person broke up with this uh, boyfriend and during his wedding she put all his chats in screenshot chats in a PPT and presented in front of his wedding party so my recommendation is never fight online whatever you have just okay calm down say that I need to talk to you let's talk about it it's always best to talk okay but don't react you have to respond but it's always best to yeah. 
do it face to face because yeah. and sometimes we we have this auto correct issues and you know, all we instead of writing some word it goes to some other word instead of telling uh, i don't I, i want to talk to you it becomes i don't want to talk to you then you finished finished one wrong word one wrong auto correct and there when you're texting the tone is not visible because i say there's a yeah. there's a rule 55 34 7 that means 55% of the communication happens through non non verbal the body 34% of communication happens through the tone of voice the so remaining few <coughs> is words so in the mobile you can't understand the tone you may be humorously saying something but you said some you wrote something in all caps when other person reads in all caps it feels as if you're shouting at them so never discuss or never try to resolve things over the phone it's always best to come sit old fashioned old school that's the best method because there you can see their body language there you can see their emotion and there you will be 100% now you are working and your meeting is going on your significant other other is fighting with you or the chat can you give you 100% there so you're not 100% present there so if you are discussing something important or some conflict is there it's always best to have face to face conversation so that you can be there hundred percent but if you are doing it along with others it's going to end up in a bad way okay so you have written this book in the indian context mm-hmm. right yes. and from your experiences in mm-hmm. dealing with the uh, people mm. so what about language i mean you have addressed to you, uh, we, uh, what audience were you uh, thinking of addressing when you wrote this book uh, above 15 because above 15. if you see the uh, language if you read it, it is colloquial english yeah. i didn't go to uh, use like, this high level uh, grammar yeah. it's just like communication i am talking to you no okay. english which i'm using now same english i didn't go for any grammar issues because i understand so conversational to the you you con- in conversation with the teenagers right, there's a like you know, there's a b- breaking the wall we say right direct yeah. talking so i had got some reviews from the readers they feel that it was as if a therapist is directly talking to us Okay. So it's like I'm directly talking to you. There's no two per the second person thing. So somebody has read this book and have they come back to you asking questions? Yeah, many. Like no, not about the Swan. Like how did you come to know about this? Thing? These are small things which uh, now we realize actually we are doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. But there was one reader who read only ten chapters and immediately called and said, within just ten chapters, I I have found out my six mistakes which I do. <laughs> within ten chapters, six mistakes I have. I'm doing. She's married. She's telling that. Six ch- or ten chapters I finished. The first six chapters, whatever you wrote, I'm doing it now. I realize it. <laughs> so that's the thing. So I said, now okay, I want to know what you feel after hundred chapters. <laughs> so the reviews are good. So They're each good. each um, each item, each way mm-hmm. is one chapter. Is one. Is And one it's chapter. not connected. It's like it's, each chapter is independent. So you yeah. can start from any chapter. Same. It's you can not like ba- you can, can reverse it and you can or yeah, you can go. You can forward. start from anyway. There's okay. no like it's, like it's not connected. That's because now people don't have the patience to read <laughs> huge yeah, volumes. So even if you consider uh, a message which is more than four sentences, the students will not read. Yes, absolutely. If they'll see the length of the message. If it's too long, they'll not read. So I kept that my that in mind also. I kept it as one chapter is hardly one page, one and a half page. That's it. because uh, it's a mind is a, it's a yeah, kind just of, went through yeah, yeah it's a kind of psychological thing now y- even in media why do you put columns in newspaper like it's not like continuous why do you use columns it's a it's a kind of psychological thing it tricks the brain to think that no it is not too much so it's a kind of psychological idea which we use in the media also where in uh, you write use your columns for uh, newspapers so when you read the column when you see the columns the brain thinks oh, it's a small one so i can read it same way when you see the chapters are only one two pages okay you feel that yeah i can read it but if the chapter is more than five pages suddenly okay <laughs> it's how our ch- uh, children uh, learn for exams they see the weight and pages number of pages in the book and then decide whether i want to read the book and how long did it take you to write this book <laughs> uh, it, it fortunately one one uh, benefit i had because of lockdown <laughs> how okay. right? during the pandemic pandemic i started it so okay. uh, if i combine everything i think two and a half months Two and a half months. Yeah, months. It yeah. was not like I sat continuously. It was like whenever I had time, so I was compiling it. But okay. the experience was was of ten years. Mm-hmm. So ten years of work. But, but you could remember what you yeah, what happened have, seven to eight and years really, ago. Yeah, because as a psychologist, as a counselor, we we have to remember all our clients because I am still working with the client who who, who came to me four years ago. So I should remember. what was the issue i cannot keep on asking him again so four years ago whatever he told me i have to have a record of it and when he comes for a follow up i should know that this is the issue because if i keep on asking they feel that okay i have been telling you this so many times and you don't remember so the the relationship the faith the trust they have in their therapist will go if i don't know what the issue is um 
just uh, this is not uh, your uh, experience alone mm. but generally in in in, in this uh, counseling uh, setup what is the success rate of let's say a marital uh, counseling let's say marital counseling it's never 100 percent <laughs> no that's I, that's a given but <laughs> what is the percentage it depends sir because uh, it depends on the nature of case because no two cases are the same that's true so we cannot compare to uh, even if the problem is same people are different the problem may be the same problem <coughs> but how people respond to the same problem is different so we there is no way we can compare two cases like if someone has a marital affair how it is affecting one couple may not be the same as how it's affecting another couple so usually in uh, marital issues we have this uh, most common problem is marital affair another is uh, no no lack of attention no time the most important complaint what married couple get tell is there's no time and not cooperating with the household work the most important uh, problems that have come to me in marital issues is the husband doesn't help us in our he doesn't know how to help because he has not been <laughs> yeah. taught how to help so where to blame but will, <laughs> will they teach their children how to help is yeah, another question another question that's a chain yeah so now as i said now the uh, girl or a boy they can't expect that to go from 100 years ago this work was done only by the girl you should do it you can't expect that so that has to change. Even uh, taking care of children also. There was a case where the uh, the lady was so frustrated that I feel that the child only I gave birth to the child. The husband has nothing to do with it. He gave he gave birth and now he is not even coming coming near the child. That doesn't happen. So at least he should help in feeding the child. But the uh, the problem is with the mother-in-law. Mother-in-law is like why he has to come. He's husband. He's a man of the house. He has to go. He's he's going and working right. The lady is also working. But the idea of the mother is like, my son goes and works, why he has to take care of the child? But the mother is asking, I also go to work. I go to work and then do my child's work. Why can't he help me a little? So those kind of things. And uh, in my uh, 10 years, I have handled 54 cases, marital dispute cases. Out of that, three uh, got divorced. We could not save it because uh, it was beyond saving. Because there are certain times where we have to just separate them because it doesn't work. You cannot force someone. When it is no, when the compatibility is zero, there's difference between compromise and sacrifice. <laughs> people, people confuse those things, compromising and sacrificing. In sacrifice, only one person becomes happy. In compromise, both of them. Because in sacrifice, one person gives up everything. Whereas in compromise, it's a 50 50. 50. I give up something, you, you give, give up something. something yes. But people always expect the other person to sacrifice. So there you have to change. Rather than sacrificing, work on compromise. Okay, I will give up certain things. You give up certain things. I will do certain things. You do something. But here, no, you only have to sacrifice. So if you're sacrificing, you should feel good about it. But I have not seen any couple, when they do a sacrifice, they are good, feeling good about it. They complain. See, because of him, I quit my job because there was no one to look after. All those things and uh, he doesn't give me time he's always with his friends even after marriage his friends are important to him or uh, he's always busy with business he never talks when he comes home he'll be always on the mobile phone so because they, everyone wants to communicate everyone's come right here what's happening is as I said majority of the cases is one is extramarital obviously that is very common uh, you getting attracted to someone else and that causing guilt feeling and all those things and another is communication he doesn't talk to me well. Earlier he was talking nicely. Now he is talking sarcastically. Automatically that all these romantic sentences turns into sarcasm. Eventually. <laughs> it starts with romance, then it becomes sarcasm. Every time it will be like sarcasm. So there we have a problem. Because no one wants to give up. I, why should I give up? Earlier, okay, wife was like, okay, Pati Devo Baba, I would listen. Now it's not the case. No one is going to give up. You hurt me, I am going to take revenge. And thing is, sometimes the husband or wife wants to make the other person feel how much they hurt you. You hurt me, wait, I'm going to make you feel how it feels. So there's always a kind of, I want to get back at you. I want to get back at you. And another is obsession. Obsession. People think that too much of love, they were saying, there's a very ancient thing, what is poison? Anything that becomes too much is poison. Too much of love is also a poison. There's so people they feel that I'm protecting my wife. People uh, husband feel that I'm protecting my wife. You are not supposed to go there. You're not supposed to talk to them. They think it is caring, but actually it's an obsession. It's suffocation. So here you feel that okay, it is my duty to. There's a chapter. Learn know when to. Uh, don't know. There's a saying. Uh, know when to walk away. And also one chapter which deals with like get out of each other's way. 
the best thing to do in a relationship is get out of each other's way just because you are my wife or you are my husband doesn't mean that i should be involved in everything in your life yeah that is true i should know everything about they should they, they also need their private space here what happens is you are my wife give me your password give me a pin number give me <laughs> give me your otp everything you try to completely take over their identity it could be a boy or a girl there are girls also who become like that you are mine so whatever is yours you should be mine you should not do anything without me knowing you should give me your password you should know, you should tell where you are going you should tell whom you are meeting it becomes too much eventually there is another chapter beware of the green eyed monster green eyed monster means jealousy initially the small small jealousy when you begin the relationship it's cute initially but as it goes it turns into a monster and it <laughs> definitely I, i think comparison is one of the biggest problems mm-hmm. uh, that every relationship yes. faces see they are doing this so much yeah exactly see they are, but they don't know the inner story there there's also a chapter called the grass is greener on, on the, the other side, side of the fence <laughs> they everything looks be- and there is always I, one thing is we should understand that there's some there'll always be someone better than us now we have a wife she is pretty but when you look at other okay she is prettier it doesn't mean that you you got to give up this girl, uh, wife and go to that girl because when you marry that girl again you see another girl she'll be prettier than this girl so it yeah. never ends it's like the b- b- mobile like yes think. versions yeah. come <laughs> versions the come. latest one what is the iphone 14 or yes. something like that anyway uh, very interesting mm-hmm. um what are you you going to write another book yeah i am two two more books online to already two more you know it's yes. working on it working one will be um, based on uh, it will be a book helping the parents to understand teenagers mm-hmm. surviving teenagers so that book again it will be having 100 ways how to understand teenagers because now we feel that when we are of 12 years we were like this why can't you be like this that question doesn't work anymore because the time what the present teenagers are and what we were when we were teenagers in those time are two different thing two different timelines so we can't expect the teenagers to behave like us when we were teenagers we have a habit ninna nimma vayasalli iddaga na vaadu madidvi when we were of your age we did that that sentence doesn't work here anymore absolutely not <laughs> that time we didn't have any distractions now there are thousands of distractions i actually don't blame the teenagers the time and situation they are born in is very very difficult actually too much of distractions too much of uh, facilities the more the facility the more lazier they get so i don't blame the teenagers for how they are it is this is time is like this there was there is one more uh, uh, corollary to that mm. in the past uh, in the in the earlier days at least in the indian mm. context parents had lots of children mm-hmm. and uh, individual intention was not mm. there but they they always were together and learned from each other mm. they also knew that resources were limited yes. and they had to survive so today the parents overdo it mm-hmm. because they did not get certain things they want to do something for their children and do the maximum without knowing what exactly that is going to have an effect so obviously it will damage them that's what we believe <laughs> but as the days evolve we don't know how the demographics and dynamics will change in families it's going to be very very difficult to communicate mm-hmm. now the communication between children and parents is reduced parents don't know what's happening in the teenager's life. life yeah the friends know better than the parents yeah they hardly know some of them don't know what they're doing from the morning till evening so much of secrecy between parents Yeah, privacy is needed, but secrecy is not needed. Privacy is needed, but secrecy is yeah, bad. I, I think that's a lack of trust. Like, like I, I mean, I, 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 I also interact mm-hmm. with a lot mm-hmm. of people, and one of them is uh, like, if I tell my parents that I went and did this, I mm-hmm. went out with this mm-hmm. person, I went out for to the mall, I, I, I went out to a movie. Which movie? Okay, let's say it's a, uh, let's say it's an adult mm-hmm. movie, or it's got other mm-hmm. scenes in it. and if i tell my parents this they won't like yeah, it they and, won't and, like. and they will so it's better i don't tell them anything mm. so how they are afraid of how parents will react, react you know these because are because i have seen children come and say why don't you talk to your father sir what's the use sir because i know what he'll do they say i know what my father will say because they are already predicting they already know how their father is going to react that's the problem thing now parenting is the most difficult task earlier so, children so you are suggesting we don't have children we need to have children that's <laughs> a basic thing yeah, as, no, as a human i'm just yes. cracking you up but now just like any other skill we need to upgrade our parenting, parenting skills. skills we can't use the same old techniques we need to be so upgraded it's a it's, it's going to be a full time job now parenting is going to be it's already a full time job but it's going to be more than that so you so that's your next book and then uh, about then one other is about how to survive office office politics oh <laughs> so it's about 
how you know when you go to an office because now i see a lot of students getting into getting placed they are very good in their technical skills they are very good in their work but they can't survive the environment there because you know you're dealing with you're not just dealing with machines you're dealing with humans who are from different different ideologies different backgrounds no one is going to be a friend there <laughs> so how to survive it like how because i've seen but they tell you they are your friend i mean in office they tell you they are your friend but actually they are not some are but it's difficult to identify <laughs> who who is actually your friend or not but it's always better to be in our you know uh, safe side or uh, be vigilant all the time because ultimately they are also there to work we are also there to work and sometimes oversharing and other things can lead to problems it's a it's a thing <laughs> So there's a, actually a management concept related yeah. to office politics, hierarchies yeah. of yeah, politics. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted to use the psychological idea and and I think that's also changing. There are a lot of things affecting it. I mean, work from home is mm -hmm. one. Hybrid work is another. Mm -hmm. The flatter hierarchies. Earlier mm -hmm. you had this, you know, yes. the ancient, ancient patriarchal, pa yeah, patri <laughs> yeah, patri pa patriarchal yeah. system of uh, working. Yes. Now that's also changing. So youngsters have their own, as you said, uh, ways of looking at things. So things are changing mm -hmm. and uh, politics also will change with it. So you yes. have how to cope with it. I think that's a very good yeah, topic. Actually, earlier the main concern was monetary concern yeah. in, the, in any job. But now the youngsters, they don't just look for monetary. They want respect, they want the freedom, they want the passion. So that's the thing now. Earlier we were like, okay, if you get 5,000 more, we'll just jump. But now it's not like that. You give them lakhs and lakhs of package, but they're not happy because of the environment. They're not, because one is that a home environment, they are kings in there, kings and queens in their home environment. And they expect the office also to treat them like that. At home, parents are listening to you, they will they'll do everything you say. They expect the same environment in the office. So that is one. And here, I'm, I want to use some psychological ideas to deal with this. Yeah. Um, so it's been a wonderful session, actually. And uh, you've got two more books in the pipeline, mm. so we can meet again. Yes. And uh, now we have built a relationship. <laughs> I think we should uh, maintain it. And I'll read your book. Definitely, sir. Uh, I'll, so that I'll wait for your review. <laughs> <laughs> so that uh, we can ha have a very good relationship. And I can improve my relationship with my spouse and significant mm -hmm. other. And all of you viewers, if you are uh, having a problem or you think you're having a problem or others think that you are having a problem, <laughs> I think I guess you should read this book. There are a hundred ways. You can start at the back and come to the first, mm -hmm. or you can start from the first and come to the end. But either way, read all the 100 and I'm sure 50% of them mistakes each one of us does. But we can always correct them. And with that, I want to say a great big thank you to you. Thank you, sir. You're an amazing person and that's why you're on our show, Amazing People for News Karnataka. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, we, I'll see you again after you write the next book. Yes, sir. Possibly in between also we can mm -hmm. meet to discuss how we can improve relationships. Yes, I'm, sure, I'm sure that's a topic that everybody enjoys. <laughs> so. Uh, not enjoys, but <laughs> at least uh, it's necessary. <laughs> necessary. Yes, yes. So thank you very much. Thank you, thank you for having me. Yeah. Thank you. Bye.